Hello and welcome to this new episode of the Sovereign Society podcast. I'm super stoked to have this conversation. And you know, like they say this thing about divine timing, how things are always happening according to divine plan and they happen in flow exactly as they should. Well, there's no accident today that I have Elizabeth Peterson of by Erica Elizabeth here. And it's funny because as I'm recording this, I'm on a 40 day social media sabbatical to reset my nervous system. And that's like her passion to talk about with her adaptogens and all of her elixirs that she offers to just bring balance. And so I'm so grateful to be having this conversation with you because this is literally the only conversation I'm having during this sabbatical. So again, that's there's so like funny. no accident. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So I was really stoked. And it's so funny because I have some of her elixirs. I have her intuition and flow um, elixir. And this morning, instead of a London fog, I call it a London clarity, where I do it with like Earl Grey and macadamia nut milk and her elixir that she has. And uh, to like decalcify my pineal gland, which has been, you know, another huge part of my passion too and I know you're really passionate about intuition so again thanks for being here yeah my pleasure it's so funny because right before I right before we started recording I was actually talking about intuition and flow on my story (laughs) oh my gosh see all the synchronicities are happening I actually have this thing in my office that says like I know I'm on the path of enlightenment when I witness more synchronicity in my life oh I love that yeah So here we are, all the (laughs) things happening. So thank you again. And I want to dive in by first, before we go any further, for those people that don't know, like it's such a craze right now, adaptogens, you know, and everyone's talking about it. So I would love for you just to give us like a quick 101 about adaptogens and why you feel like they're the hot thing right now. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, I think it's funny because a lot of these things I see tend to f- tend to lose some of their potency in in the wave of a trend. So we don't really know why we're doing what we're doing. Um, but adaptogens essentially are a class of herbs that help your body to adapt to stress. So as you were saying, they work on the level of the nervous system to bring about more balance. So they're, they're really working to reduce stress hormones and then also improve your relationship to stress so that you can have more, what we call adaptation energy. So that when you walk into maybe a a more taxing or stressful environment, your body rather than, than crashing or crumbling or, or, you know, getting sick after something is actually going to be able to adapt to that situation or that environment and actually build more resilience. So that's what adaptogens bring about. So the body. AKA superpowers to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think they're, they're trendy right now because, you know, if you look at, you know, when things start to come forth, there's a purpose for that. You know, there's, they're relevant for that for this time and and we do have so much um overstimulation over inundation and all of that so naturally something like that is gonna is gonna move forward whether people know exactly why they're using it or not but if we can educate and explain what these herbs are actually doing then it's more empowering for people to start to use them um right yeah because i feel like this is something because like Today, I'm on day 18 of my 40-day detox. I'm almost halfway there. And a part of me doesn't want to go back on social media, but I know that's not possible. (laughs) I just, I felt like I needed that break because I've been on social media since I was like 13, 14, like I could possibly remember. And what's been coming through a lot during this away period is just realizing like, we as humans, we've never dealt with the amount of technology that we have right now and the amount of stress that it comes of like, you know, seeing what everyone else is doing or the EMF radiation from our phones or our computers or just like always feeling like we need to be on. And I know for me and I know for a lot of people that are in my inner circle, 
the feeling of burnout is real right now. Totally. Totally. We're all feeling it. We're all like, whoa. And so for me, like, I was like, you know what? I'm taking this 40 day sabbatical because I'm in the middle of rebranding right now. I'm in the middle of like, I was writing my book. I got like 20,000 words and then I had a writer's block and it's because it's like slow down, chill out, you know? So Mm -hmm. I feel like we have to allow ourselves to take that time to adapt even to ourselves and what we need, which has been, it's kind of hard for people who are in the wellness industry because we feel the call that we need to help others and we need Mm -hmm. to like show up for everyone else. But if we're not taking care of ourselves, we're fucked. (laughs) <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's it's interesting because I think so many people in the wellness space are some of the people who experience that the most because, mm-hmm. you know, that lifestyle of it, it does sometimes um, foster more of that perfectionist like you know, do, 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 you have to get your workout in and you have to eat right. And you have to, you know, all these things that we put so much pressure on ourselves to do. And so in that, I think it's actually really common for people in the wellness space to experience burnout. Um, at least everyone that I've prior to having my focus being more on the elixirs and the adaptogens, I saw clients. So I'm a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. Um, and everyone that I worked with was very much, whether they were in wellness or um, just really interested in wellness and, and had a really healthy lifestyle already, those were the people I was, I was seeing because all of them had hormonal imbalances and adrenal mm. issues. So yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, the adrenals too, because again, we're like working late, we have like all these things. And I think the hormone balance has been really interesting to me because I'm like approaching 30. And so I'm thinking a lot of like kids down the line and just seeing like a really big wave of like women having a hard time getting pregnant right now. Mm hmm. You know, and just seeing also just all the added hormones we've been ingesting for so long in our food and, you know, like soy milk and all these things. Like a lot of people who are like trying to eat healthy as vegetarian, but then they go to soy Mm -hmm. and it's like, that's not helping you either. So what are you seeing a lot with the hormone balance imbalances and, you know, people are really what's causing a lot of that you do you feel yeah well i mean it's true that most i mean women in particular just because our hormonal system is a lot more complex there's more factors there so many women have i mean i don't i actually haven't met a woman who has perfect hormones um and there's a lot of factors there so as you mentioned the the nature of um our food supply and the way probably most of us grew up was not eating necessarily organic, not eating especially organic animal products, you know, dairy and meat and things that have those added hormones. Mm -hmm. Tap water has, um, you know, people flush down pills and medications and a lot of times birth control. So actually you can get hormones from our tap water Um, and even filtered water like a Brita, for instance, doesn't filter out those, those things. Or we walk out into your environment and we breathe in what are called phytoestrogens. So when we're burning plastics and, and different debris, the air, that pollution actually has phytoestrogens in it. Um, same with soy, like you were saying, contains phytoestrogen. So there's all of this uh, excess estrogen or, or these chemicals that are mimicking estrogen in the body. And so a lot of women are having estrogen dominance or, you know, and then there's the other end of the spectrum of, of women, um, which was me a few years ago before, um, finishing up school, I had, um, you know, I had been on that whole wellness train of like over-exercising, really restricting what I was eating, that whole thing that I feel like so many women struggle with. And so I hadn't had a period for over five years. And so I had no estrogen, which is the opposite of a lot of the women that I work with. Um, but that's really common too, especially in like, I live in Boulder, um, you know, 
and I go to LA often and in Southern California, people are into wellness and we're, we're told that, you know, a lot of times less or that working out a lot is really healthy or, you know, eating salads and raw foods all the time is really healthy. And, and it's not to say that they aren't, but oftentimes these can strip away some of our hormones. And so we have the opposite issue of not enough hormones. And so when I went to go get my hormones tested, she was like, oh my God, I've like never seen anything like this. You not only do you not have any estrogen, I knew I didn't have estrogen because I didn't have a period. Um, but you don't have any testosterone. You don't have any progesterone. Wow. Like you don't have any hormones. And so basically my body just didn't have the necessary um components to really create these hormones. And so in that I was experiencing anxiety and insomnia and heart palpitations. And so this is, you know, there's two ends of that spectrum, but, um, and then there's, you know, the factors of all these, you know, women being put on birth control since they were 14, Mm. 15 years old, which is another thing. And thankfully I haven't had to had to recover from that, but I know so many women who have. And so there's all of these different things. And I think it just comes down to a lack of understanding and a lack of empowerment when it comes to women and women's health and really understanding, like most women don't even know that they have four phases to their cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's like, these are things that I think we'll start to to talk more about, but there's really a lack of understanding about the female body in general. Definitely. Um, Yeah. It's interesting. Cause you know, I, I remember like in high school and stuff, like girlfriends being like, yeah, I don't have my period. And then (laughs) I was like, Oh, that doesn't seem right. And when I see like this last moon I had like last week, Oh my God, I died. Like literally like I was throwing up all day Mm -hmm. purging. I was so sick and I have a really strong relationship with my body. I'm very connected to her. And I like understand um, she tells me what's happening. And over the years, just from my own journey and deeper sense of awareness, I know that when I'm having those really challenging moons, it's because I'm purging out the old shit. Mm. And I'm releasing a lot of energy, um, creating like the things that have been created in as my reality that aren't serving me anymore. My body's like purging that out. So if you're yeah. not having your period, you're not purging out these emotions and these energies. And I just always feel like, oh, well, that would could have been a child that, you know, would have had more yeah. problems. <laughs> and it's interesting because I feel like so much of my journey has been like healing myself so that um, it wouldn't be passed down to my kids, you know, being that sacred disruptor. Um, yeah. I'm balancing that, the energy within my body and uh, my hormones and just be able to, you know, have that deeper sense of awareness of like my habits and my behaviors. Because I think the other thing too, like you said, like education, we weren't really taught this. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of women, for instance, like put on that Gardasil and then they all got HPV. Like it actually, you know what I mean? Things like that. Like there was such a lack of awareness. And I feel like, especially we as millennials, like we were kind of like test dummies as Mm -hmm. young children to see, Mm -hmm. um, like how our bodies would be or react in terms of like these various vaccinations and birth control and um, IUDs and things like that. And so I don't know, what are you seeing with a lot of women that are coming off birth control and are working on um, regulating their cycle again? Like, what are you seeing happening? Well, it, I mean, it's really challenging for women. I, from what I witness, um, and it it makes me just really want to to help in that sense because I think you know, I mean, when people take start stop taking their birth control, especially if they stop you know, suddenly it's like a lot of times they can experience all sorts of emotions and mood issues. And I mean, really anything digestive skin issues. And so the easiest thing is to just be like, well, whatever, I'll just go back on the pill because it's, it's challenging. And not only that, but birth control depletes so many essential nutrients in the body. Um, And so, you know, you get off birth control and you have all of these nutrient deficiencies, which again, 
not many people know about and, and no one's really talking about that unless you're seeing, you know, a holistic practitioner of some sort, but really, you know, you get off the, the pill and it, it depletes your gut bacteria. It depletes magnesium and, and all these different minerals. Like there's so many things that need to be supplemented. Mm-hmm. And if you can, if you can work with someone or, or have the guidance that, um, you know, to be able to, to repair those nutrient deficiencies and work with your diet and, and, you know, really give yourself, I mean, it's not, I think it would be beautiful if women could take time to like really like care for themselves and nurture themselves after, you know, if you're going to make that decision to go off of something like that, but that's not encouraged or talked about, you know, mm-hmm. when it feels like they have, you know, the space to do that. Um, so yeah, it's definitely challenging. And I, I mean, I'm just thankful that I personally didn't have to ever do that. I, I remember being in high school, always being like pissed at my parents that I wasn't on birth control. <laughs> but um, looking back, I'm like, well, I mean, <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't. But. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because I remember I was on it for like a couple months just because I've like, I've had like excruciating periods since yeah. I was young, you know, but mm-hmm. it was not for me, like my energy, my emotions, everything. So I didn't have as much to um, wing off as people who've been on birth control since they were like 13 yeah. and are like now becoming deeper aware. So, I mean, I know you're not seeing people in front of you right now with it, but what are some of the minerals that you would say are really important that, um, that you see are the most common of the yeah. deficiency from, um, coming off of birth control and and beginning embarking on that journey to maintain that wholeness and wellness. Yeah. Well, I'll give you just a few supplements that would be really good for women who are getting off birth control in general. Not, um, I'll give you more than just the minerals. Um, so definitely, um, a high quality probiotic is, is going to be really great because again, birth control can actually strip the, the gut of good bacteria. So, and really everyone could benefit from that because we don't really culture and ferment food like cultures prior to us did. So every culture actually has its own fermented food that they tend to use except for us. So mm-hmm. some of us might choose to ferment foods, but this time we don't really need to do that to preserve food. So um, a good quality probiotic is really great. And then vitamin D is essential, especially if you're, if you're going to have, you know, vitamin D actually acts almost as a hormone in the body. Um, it's not a hormone, but it actually works really closely with the endocrine system. So if you're going to work on balancing your hormones, then vitamin D is essential. And you always want to get vitamin D3. Um, other forms are, are not as bioavailable and they're often synthetic. Um, and then fish oil is really great, like a good quality fish oil. Would you uh, say like udon oil for those like vegans out there? Yeah, yeah. There's definitely um, vegan options mm-hmm. um, that even some that utilize like seaweeds and things like that. So definitely, if you're a vegan, like there's options for that. But some source of really high quality omega three, um, not just like eating chia seeds, which is great. You should do that too. <laughs> but a supplementation would be really helpful. Um, and then a B complex mm. is really important. So not just B12, not just B6. So the B vitamins actually work synergistically. So you actually need all of them present for any of them to be absorbed. So it's not really beneficial to just take a B6 or just take a B12. So you want to get a B complex. And if you're wanting to supplement then more with you know B6 or B12 or um, whatever it is, then you can add that, but just make sure you're taking the B complex as well. Um, B complex will help a lot. So that's a really easy supplement that if you're feeling ever low energy or mm, slow metabolism or just kind of, you know, lethargic or, or down B vitamins are really helpful. Actually, a lot of, um, mental imbalances are actually just severe, severe B vitamin deficiency. So definitely B vitamins and then magnesium. So some really high quality magnesium, um, those are kind of like foundation. Holy grail. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And people often ask, you know, like a really common thing is like, well, 
shouldn't we be able to get all of our, our nutrients from food if we're eating really healthy? Like I eat a whole food based diet. And the fact is, is that the, the food supply that we have, even if you are eating organic and shopping at an organic natural food store, our soils are depleted. So Definitely. you're not getting what you used to get from a carrot. Um, you'd have to eat like 30 carrots to get like the original, you know, nutrient content that you would have gotten 100, 200 years ago. So you really have to be aware of that. You're not really getting what you used to get. So um, supplements are really valuable in that sense. You just want to get high quality ones. So people are like, well, don't I just pee them out? <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, you don't. Um, not if you're using high quality supplements. Um, so even like some of the brands at Whole Foods are not even that great. So you want to, um, you know, Jaro is a really great brand that you can find at Whole Foods. Yep, um, I use Jaro. Yeah, they're pretty yeah. good. Um, Nordic Naturals has a fish oil and they're pretty good. Um, yeah, and then Pure Encapsulations is a slightly more um, higher end, not higher end brand, but a more professional um, brand. That's a really great one. Thorn is another good one. So um, just make sure that you're getting good quality supplements. Don't get your supplements at like target. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing too, because I know a lot of people are like, they're wanting to take the supplements, but they're like, Oh, the, the money. Right. But yeah. something that's been interesting that I've been really reflecting on too, is like seeing one that you're worth it. Right. Like we mm -hmm. spend money on so many other stupid things, but if your health isn't your top priority, you can't serve, you can't show up, you mm -hmm. can't share your gifts with the world. Like your health is everything. Yeah. You totally. Know? So it's like worth the investment and just taking it as like seeing yourself. And I don't know, I know with me, like kind of creating like a little ceremony when you're taking your supplements of like really paying the reverence and respect for what you're taking. So it's not mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just have another thing in the medicine cabinet or like <laughs> more supplements in the kitchen. But like understanding that as you take it, like, understand and remember how they make you feel as you stay consistent. I think that's a, a hard, a lot of hard things for people is like they buy all the supplements, but they're not consistent with it mm -hmm. either. Yeah. I love that. I always tell people that, you know, if you like give your attention to something, if you're really going to be present with it, it's going to be that much more potent because, you know, you're not just like running out the door, like you know, throwing your supplements back and like chugging it or, you know, it's the same with eating food, like eating while you're on the go or on the, in the car or whatever. Um, giving some, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, it is important to, you don't need to take 15 different supplements, but if you have, you know, your five, six supplements that you take really, really know why you're taking them, like have an intention with it. Not that, that's more activating for it as well. So rather than just, you know, like I'll go home and my parents will be like, I read that I'm supposed to take this. And I'm like, you don't need to take that. Like, <laughs> like if you, if you, the you marketing's know, really good. Totally. <laughs> like <laughs> there's, there's some like essential things that most people should take, but, um, yeah. So I think that that's part of it is like a lot of people are taking things just because they heard it's good from that for them or again, the trends, them. right? Yeah. yeah. So definitely. Yeah. So what would you say? Would you say that that got you on the path of nutrition was you understanding your hormone imbalance or what was it? What was the kicker for you that you were like, okay, I really want to be a nutritionist and, and, and heal myself. Like what has been your journey to, to this space now? Yeah. Um, so actually I've known I wanted to be a nutritionist since I was like 13 years old mm -hmm. <laughs> and that I don't, I mean, I, part of it was just loving to cook and loving, um, you know, I, it wasn't always like healthy food growing up, but I loved helping my mom with that. I loved plating things beautifully. And then I was always an athlete. So as I started to get older, I started to just witness the correlation between, oh, when I eat, you know, a cheeseburger and drink soda before a basketball game, like it's a different effect than when I like make something myself or, you know, eat something homemade and like eat something that's more it's uh, love. nutritional. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, there's a different effect that happens. 
And so that was really what, you know, I, I'm such a result driven person. So like seeing what something does, I'm like, then I have a tendency to like go overboard and become obsessive. So I'm aware of that now. <laughs> I don't let that happen. But at the time it was like, oh my God, like this is amazing. And so it's kind of spiraled from there. Um, I was reading a lot of like vegan cookbooks when I was in high school and making sauerkraut and kombucha. <laughs> My parents Amazing. were like, who are you? Like I live in, I I'm, don't live in, but I'm from um, the Midwest. I'm from Wisconsin. So I was like, I mean, nobody was, is or was in your own path like that yeah yeah amazing uh, um, yeah so that was kind of how it started and then I I always wanted I wanted to have the I didn't want to go the the traditional like registered dietitian path um, I wanted that qualification, but I didn't want to learn what they were taught. Um, and I know there's lots of really amazing dietitians out there, but for me, it was painful to think of sitting in school for six years, listening to someone talk about something that I really didn't believe in. <laughs> and so, but in that, I, 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 I almost went that route just to because that's it was what was telling me to do. Yeah. And then last minute I was like, no, like this is not what I wanted or this is not what I want. And so I, there was a school that I had been looking at for a while called Bowman College. Um, they're actually based in Berkeley, California, which is where I wanted to go. But because I was so last minute with like changing my mind, of course, um, they had another campus in Boulder, Colorado, which I had never been to Colorado. I was like, no, I want to go to California. That's where I want to go. <laughs> um, but they, it was way past enrollment, way past when I could, um, when I was supposed to apply. But I had this like, I'm just going to apply and see what happens. And if I don't get in, then I guess, you know, I'll take a year off, which was like scary. I was like not wanting to do that, but it was to the point where I was like, I don't want to be a register. I don't want to be a dietitian. I don't, nothing that comes with that is appealing to me. And they got back and were like, well, the Berkeley campus is full, but we have one spot in Boulder. If you want to go, it starts in like a week. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> so, um, I went to holistic nutrition school in Boulder and I've been here since. So. Amazing. So I want to talk about that because, uh, that's like the perfect example of you, like understand there's something better, like you getting out of your own way to discover the path and look at you're still in Boulder, which is still a very strong wellness community. Mm, totally. Yeah. yeah. So beautiful. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I am. Um, Boulder's amazing. I, it's like, it's, it's such a great little city. Um, but yeah, I think um, when I look back on that moment, I'm like, it's so interesting that I had the awareness to like discern there. I mean, now it's like, I, at that time, I didn't really know about like intuition and checking in with myself and like trusting my gut and all of those things. And if I look back, you know, there's definitely, I can pinpoint several instances where that's what was happening, you know, in my childhood or whatever. But um, I think it, it, it is interesting. And I'm, I, I guess like, I'm just glad <laughs> I listened to myself because I loved school. It was like the, it was like the best thing ever. Everything about it was like so great. And had I not, I don't think I would have had that same experience had I done the original plan. <laughs> yeah. So that's the surrender, you know, and it's yeah. like trusting and a lot of the intuition work, you know, is like trusting and, mm -hmm. and having that inner faith. And it's interesting to see how intuition and all of these and mindfulness has been becoming this bridge with intuitive, you know, as intuitive medicine, functional medicine. Mm -hmm. And so how are you seeing that becoming the future and the now of medicine? Mm, I love that question. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely time that we like move beyond just body consciousness and body of, you know, food and exercise. Like there's so much more and, you know, 
I guess when I, I, when I started going to school, that was one of the things that really opened up to me where so many of my teachers were, um, you know, really conscious people. And I hadn't been around that ever in my life. Like I was raised really conservative. Um, and so, you know, when they would start to talk about, you know, it's so much more than like what you eat and how often you move your body. I remember kind of being like, no, it's, it's not. <laughs> But then it started to open up to me and I was like, oh my God, yeah, it's so it totally is. And um, and then after school, I actually went to, uh, my, I did a mindfulness functional medicine program. And once again, I, I, I don't, that was totally something that was intuitive. I went to this major like nutrition conference in California and I met these people who put on this program and I, just remember being like, I need to do that. Like, I, I, I don't know why, but I need to do that. And the first class, I just remember sitting there being like, oh my God, like I'm making myself sick. Like my mind is making myself sick. I've convinced myself that I have adrenal fatigue, that I have hormonal imbalances, that I have insomnia. And then from there, everything that goes with that, you know, understanding that, oh, when I don't sleep, here's all the like horrible things that are happening in my body because that's, you know, that's how I looked at it. And so then those things would manifest. And I, I just remember being like, oh my God, like this is, this is the limit that I've like put on my life. And so therefore I'm, then I'm not going out and I'm not, you know, hanging out with friends and I'm not, I'm living this really rigid lifestyle based on, you know, my story. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. so that's just a, one of, you know, that's a small example, but it's, it's really, I think now, if you ask me, I would say that the state of your mind is far more important than, anything body related. I think that we can create that outcome with our mind and our mindset and our, and the purity of our mind. If we're constantly having these horrible self-defeating thoughts, then that's what's manifesting. And so, Mm. um, yeah, it's, I think that is absolutely, um, the future of wellness. And that's why meditation is like everywhere and everyone's a meditation teacher, which is great. And also I think like there's, you know, it's, you have to definitely have discernment when you're looking for people to, to follow Work with. in that arena. Definitely. Um, <laughs> but, but it's good because, you know, we're starting to talk about it. Um, and it's like, I have, I'm like, I feel like in 10 years, we're going to look back and it's going to be like silly that meditation was even like a questionable thing. It's like, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's like 50 years ago, people thought like going to a gym was weird, but now there's gyms on every corner. I think like, it's probably going to be the same with meditation, um, which is amazing. And I think it'll be interesting to watch the progression of, you know, wellness, because I think, I mean, speaking for myself, there were so many things that I, I, looking back, I was just coping with, I was doing the things to, to cope, um, and meditation and, and working with my mind was the only thing that, truly relieved me of those things, which I didn't even know those things were still there until I started meditating and, and, you know, going from that angle. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Cause I definitely think too, I mean, I don't know if you knew, but, uh, like I said, I was really excited about this conversation and it's funny because as you were talking, like my dog came through and him and I were struck by lightning in 2012. Oh that my gosh. completely re like, screwed up my whole nervous system. Like, wow, that's, you know, and that's been my journey. So when you're talking about like understanding the stories and the limits that like those stories have placed with us, with our well-being and, um, our healing, that was so much of my life as well for six years. You know, I feel like this has been like the first year where I've really been able to witness that and understand like, okay, like that story isn't serving me, nor is it serving anyone else? Because if it's not serving me, I can't show up to my best and my, my purpose and live out my truth. And so, um, I know for me, like, as I continue to 
um, hold space and help cultivate like these conscious entrepreneurs and, you know, conscious business um, people. I know for me, like down the line, as I'm in deep abundance, you know, I know a huge part of my work will be donating to um, MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies, and to see mm. how um, psychedelics are also helping with mental health and yeah. feeling like there's a reason why mushrooms, psilocybin, you know, or you do work a lot with chaga and all these things, like these very ancient medicines, plant medicines, um, are helping people overcome depression and are helping yeah. people like heal from PTSD, which has been really passed down to a lot of us as well. Um, mm -hmm. which I feel like has a lot of the nervous system and like the imbalances we have because of our surroundings and our environments. And so, uh, I know you work a lot like in this intention and flow. I got my chaga in here. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, what are you seeing with the rise of medicinal mushrooms, for instance, um, yeah. coming through? Cause I feel like, again, like there's trends and then there's, there's ahas. And I feel like meditation is an aha. I feel like yeah. medicinal mushrooms is an aha. Mm -hmm. you know? So what are you seeing with like the, the spike of interest around medicinal mushrooms and these plant medicines, even being in Boulder, like these plant yeah. medicines that are, um, people are attracted to right now mm -hmm. because they're looking for solutions that they offer. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. I mean, I think, I mean, we are as, as a whole, as a collective, like we are starting to wake up. We're starting to, you know, we're, we're drawn to these things that we, we see as medicine, we see as the, there's potential there for healing and, you know, any of these trends, I think we make them the trend, but all of these things, even juicing, for instance, juicing's great, but it's when people started to live off juice that then that becomes a problem. <laughs> you know, it's like our, no our balance. extremism. Yeah, we're so extreme in the West. And so all of these things, you know, they're coming forth for a purpose. And especially like speaking with, medicinal mushrooms, for instance. And I think medicinal mushrooms are, are also adaptogens. So um, these, these plants are actually the plants that tend to be the ones that have survived major natural disasters or severe climate change, or just, you know, they've had to adapt over time to become more resilient. And medicinal mushrooms are a really prime example, because if you look at like a reishi mushroom or a lion's mane mushroom, it's like robust. Yeah. <laughs> um, like and, healing the trees. They heal trees. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, and then if you look at us and, and the state that we're in, like you were saying earlier, this is, this is, we've never had this much technology to really process. And we've never had this much, this many, um, stimulants. this high of demand and, and stimulants. And so we're, our systems, you know, we're moving, rap like our culture is moving rapidly, but our nervous systems haven't had the space to really integrate and adapt. And so that's where these things like adaptogens and medicinal mushrooms are so beneficial because they actually hold that adaptation energy. So just like any other, you know, herb or vegetable or plant, they have vitamins and minerals and all of those things, but then they have this additional quality that's adaptation. And so it's actually upgrading our nervous systems to be able to take on more and to be able to process all that's happening around us. And so I think, you know, in that, that's why so many people are drawn to them, whether they, you know, realize it or not. Um, it's burnout is, is so common. Like it's real. Not, yeah. <laughs> and fatigue. And I mean, that's just the nature of our Western world. And so naturally, like we're going to gravitate towards these things. Um, and I think, you know, it, it's just a matter of, of really like bringing awareness to them in a way that we can, we can 
Like a lot of people are taking medicinal mushrooms and they don't know why, which is, which is fine. Cause they were told to. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like with that too, it's again, like when you understand like, why, why are you taking it? Right. Like, but if you give yourself the opportunity to do the research, you bring more value into mm-hmm. why you're taking it. You yeah, know? absolutely. I feel like cause there's that intention and then there's also the energy of reverence and respect for what we're taking in. Yeah. You know, absolutely. cause that's a part of the other of like the overconsumption of the West is like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm doing this. And I think that was a huge part of, um, like sage, like the, like white sage mm-hmm. is almost becoming endangered. Mm-hmm. You know, like a lot of people are burning sage, but they don't. And, and like now like big, big companies are working with sage, but it's becoming more and more rare, like sandalwood that like these, these, you know, yeah, people are doing it, but there's not a deeper sense of awareness or reverence to um, the plants or um, what they offer. So yeah. it's interesting to be able to have people like you that can help educate mm-hmm. um, to bring that deeper sense of awareness and reverence and respect. Because again, we're just such an overconsumption consumption kind of uh, society. Yeah. And so it's interesting to see um, behaviors. I, I'm a sociologist. Totally. I have my degree in sociology and marketing. So yeah. I have been conditioned to study groups of people and behaviors. And so mm-hmm. to see, um, yeah, just the lack of reverence and respect for the things that we consume. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a f- fascinating thing to look at. And I think it, it is a reflect, it's such a reflection of like the state of our collective. Like mm-hmm. we're starting to wake up, but there's still so much ignorance. There's still mm-hmm. so much, um, you know, we're still so destructive in, within, you know, that more as we're moving towards more consciousness, we still have so much more refinement I guess to do yeah, yeah. work to do yeah <laughs> yeah which is why it's important to continue like that's why I was so stoked to have you on because my mission with the sovereign society podcast is to have conversations with people to bring more education yeah and that deeper sense of awareness for what we're consuming mm-hmm. and you know how we're being and how we're showing up and revolutionizing humanity you know like we're here to really activate our legacy and so if I could just help to bring more of that awareness and that clarity and the education to have people stop and think, you know, I feel like that's all of our responsibility right now. We're living in yeah. such shifting times where we have to really take into consideration, like, what are we doing? Yeah. You know? Totally. Yeah. And it's, you know, you look around, like, this is where something like, you know, anything. I'm, I'm going to use the example of adaptogens again, but this is where it can get lost and where it can lose some of its value is when, you know, it is a trend and then you see every company starting to use it from, you know, I mean, you can look at like, I was at a, a I spoke at a food conference earlier this year and there was any people from like really holistic brands to like General Mills. So like anyone and everybody was like under that roof, which was fascinating for me. Um, What a a contrast. (laughs) Totally. Um, I was definitely the minority for sure. (laughs) Um, But, you know, they put probiotics, like some of the brands that are under them are like, they're putting probiotics in the granola, which who knows how potent those probiotics are and whatever, but like- But it's a great marketer selling point. Totally. And so it's like, this is what happens, you know, even more conscious brands, you know, that start to infuse CBD into everything or adaptogens into everything, which isn't bad, but you have to also, you have to be aware that, you know, that is more from a place of, of profiting and, and making money and maybe not so intentional with the sourcing or, you know, with what they're doing as far as ratios or the extraction of those things. Like there's, there's intention behind, you know, there needs to be intention behind how those things are being utilized. And so it's really cool for me to be able to have this background in nutrition and wellness and functional medicine and all of that. And then to, you know, have, 
this line of products because to me it's it's less about you know selling products and more about the education portion and and really wanting to share that bef- like that's that's my first and foremost um right that's why you're doing it is yeah. because you're 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 hearing and you're seeing the importance of uh education and awareness yeah totally um yeah, I mean, I'm definitely like I would say before anything, like what's true, more true to me is that I'm a teacher, like a teacher and a healer, um, not a business person. <laughs> that is for you're sure. doing great. Get yourself some credit. You're doing great. <laughs> um, I'm learning. But- yeah, but that's the thing too is like we're always learning, you know. And I think a lot of times with uh, building business, the imposter syndrome can come up of like what the fuck am I doing? You know, but like when we allow ourselves to like continue to navigate and trust our heart and remember that sacred why with why we started, uh, it's a game changer. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm excited because you just launched a new line, your feminine flow. Yeah. I help with, with the female hormone imbalance. So talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So actually like circling back to what we were talking about before, you know, being someone who's a little bit younger in the field of wellness and just watching all of my friends, you know, our generation is the generation who's starting to question like, why am I on birth control? Why do I feel like shit once a month? Like, why do I like really starting to look at these things and, and be curious about them? And so in just looking at, I mean, my own personal experience, obviously, of not having a period and being so depleted and, I mean, so burnt out at such a young age, even though, you know, I I wouldn't at that time have thought I was like a super stressed out person, but looking back, I'm like, oh my God, like, I, I created the stress in my life, really. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, there was definitely other factors, but it's all our decisions and choices. Yeah. Yeah. And I had no, I had no idea that that's what I was doing was just creating so much stress and perfectionism and pressure. And and in that I like burnt out. And so just looking at, you know, my experience and then in that, when I started working with clients, those are the types of clients I would attract like easily. Um, and so As you, know, you, you attract, you attract like <laughs> you are. Totally. Get those lessons of like, yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, looking back to, I always say like, I mean, the, the year that I was finishing up school and then like the year after that were probably two of like roughest years. And I, and I felt it really honestly felt like I went from being healthy to not overnight. Like that's what it felt like. I felt like I was fine and good. And then all of a sudden I stopped being able to sleep. I started to have anxiety. All of these things started to like unfold. And it's like, I needed that experience to be able to have compassion and empathy and and experience and expertise yep. to be able to share with the the people that are so naturally attracted to me. Um, I wouldn't, like you said, it's I wouldn't. Compassion. You have that deeper sense of compassion, and like those yeah. are the moments of like becoming humble, like humility. Yeah, totally. And just being like, oh my god, yeah, like I was you, and I get it, and like it sucks. And like, let me help you, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, We all crave that. We all want to feel seen and understood, especially when we're in the shit. So. Yeah, totally. Um, Yeah. So, and then naturally like Boulder is a college town. So like I was working with a lot of young um, like college students who had eating disorders and in that had anxiety and adrenal burnout and in that had hormonal issues. Um, And so just seeing that and having a compassion for that. And then, um, you know, again, people who I would be connected with who were already, you know, using my other elixirs. I was like, I think like, this is so like, it was just I knew that this was like the next progression. And so um, I wanted to create a line that was really focused on women and and in that, letting it be a platform to talk about, you know, ways that we can empower women to really take control of their health in a way that's not the ever repeating known of like, here's how to look great and here's how to feel good in your body. And like, those are good, but they still foster that like, 
obsessive orthorexic like same old same old of like how can I like look good in my jeans you know like I don't want to talk about that (laughs) I want to talk about like how do you like take back your power as a woman and feel empowered with like your body and and how it works and understand that you do have four cycles and understand the mechanics as to you know for instance your liver plays such a valuable role in your hormonal health so if your liver is is clogged then you're gonna have bad hormones and, and so that's your source of anger so if there is a lot of repressed yeah. anger that you're holding on to you're yeah. not going to be balanced in your hormones plain and simple. totally totally yeah so really like looking at these things and and just you know what i found is that this this product line has increased my platform to be able to share more um about the the wellness and and nutrition information that I do know whereas like had I just been working one on one with clients I wouldn't have that same platform so I really wanted this to be um more of a movement in that direction of like again too like you know we talk about the rising of the divine feminine and that means so much um on a on a more like tangible level like we do look around and see so many women you know stepping into their power and really honing in on that and um in that i think you know we have to be mindful of the fact that women aren't men and the one thing that sets not the one thing, but one of the main things that sets women apart from men is the fact that we do have this 28 day cycle and to really embrace that and learn about that and work with it and, um, you know, understand our hormones and, and all of that is important. We can't just, we're not here to function in the same way that men are. Mm -hmm. Um, so really talking about that and how it's so important for our wellness and our well-being. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's just like the moon, like the, the moon has 28 days to its phase as well, you know, and yeah, the new, the waxing, the full, the waning, like yeah, each of those seven days, mm-hmm. there's shifts that happen, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that's why women are ruled by the moon and men are ruled by the sun. Mm-hmm. Totally. It's that same thing. So we can't always be on all the time. We have to actually honor our feelings and our emotions. And I think, I think that's the other thing we're really like clearing and and healing um, as a society too, is because for so many uh, generations, women were just like the ones in the kitchen, you know, and Mm -hmm. having to uh, just like please the men. But now women are becoming in that space of empowerment and um again we're we're shedding through a lot of those uh those layers as well yeah. i think that's also part of the hormone healing um and balancing that we're we're doing because i think a lot of women in history have had to you know the the ones that were the rebellious ones or the ones that like really made made waves were the ones who embraced all facets of their human experience and not mm-hmm. just trying to put on this mask and I feel like the masks are falling off in so yeah. many areas as well right now too. Totally. Yeah. I love that. I mean, that's definitely, I mean, I resonate with that so much. Like, I'm not kidding. I'm like the, I remember there was a point this year where I was like, do I even have emotions? <laughs> like, I don't know. And it was just like, just seeing, you know, some of my friends who were, really served as like an example in that and embodying people who were like super in touch, in touch with their emotions and honored them. I mean, I know that I like feel a lot, but then allowing that to, to no spiritual bypassing here. Totally. Um, so like, and then just looking at like, whoa, yeah. I mean, of course I, like, I wasn't raised to, to do that. When I was upset, I would like close myself in my room and like, hide and then I would come out like nothing was wrong and so like that's those are behaviors that um I know I'm not alone in that for sure um but yeah just this year for me especially has been like really getting in touch with that um we've had to master our emotions you know like mastering the emotions of like if I'm feeling like shit boundaries like honoring a lot of that this has been a you know 2018 was a year of spiritual mastery and now we're 
coming in 2019 and it's like a lot of us are feeling the momentum of like okay now it's really time to like shine our light now it's time to really show up and so that's why it's important to be able to have the supplements and our the our emotions our energy our minerals our nutrients really balanced so i mean yeah. what you've created with your line is really beautiful and so uh, what would what do you see as the big intention of your new line? You know, I think one of the things, probably the biggest reason why I think adoptions are so amazing is just they increase human potential. And mm. anything that helps to upgrade our nervous system, that's why practices like meditation and kundalini and these different things are so potent because they're actually upgrading your your hardware essentially. Um, and so uh, in that, like I, you know, again, as more and more women are stepping into their power and showing up and shining and all of those things, like we need to have a nervous system that can withstand that, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, if oh, we, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <You> know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, if we were to, um, you know, everything that we ever wanted was just like handed to us, we would crumble. Like our nervous systems wouldn't be able to handle that. So if we really want to embody everything and, and call in everything that we truly desire, like we need to have, we need to have that, that foundation of wellness and that nervous system that can handle that to be able to even do that. And so I think for me, like I really want to provide tools and education and, and support and all of that to, to everyone, but in this case for women to really feel empowered and confident and good in their bodies and, and in their health in general to be able to say yes to more and to do more. And um, I think, you know, one of the things that I talk about is like stress isn't going away. So, you know, we can talk about stress management and all of that. To me, that's just coping mechanisms. <laughs> so, you know, self-care and all of that is, is essential and great, but like what, a, like at the foundation of everything, like we need to be working on the level of our nervous system yeah. and, and, and being able to, to be more adaptable because again, like this, what's happening around us isn't going to slow down. So, you know, of course we can create space for ourselves and that's important and we need to, to take time to rest and do all of those things. And in that we need to be able to create a nervous system that can say yes and take on those things. And Definitely. that's, that's the invitation. Um, and that's our potential. We've obviously created this technology. So it's a matter of upgrading our own technology essentially to be able to to be in alignment with that really and to not burn out um so yeah <laughs> awesome, sister yeah I mean I know for me that's but that was the journey and I went to an energy healer last week and she was like you are burnt out on so many levels and I mean granted I was struck but yeah. uh I also knew that like being stuck in that fight or flight mode all the time was shit it sucked you know and yeah a lot of it too is like oh my god like i have to serve i have to show up there's a lot of going on but then with the burnout like i was i was so depleted and so drained that mm -hmm. i couldn't even show up anymore to like my fullest potential as you're sharing you know and yeah. so i think it's important for us especially as technology continues to evolve to you know, be aware of the habits that we're doing to take more action of cultivating that balance in every area of our life. And so mm -hmm. um, I really appreciate like your, your knowledge and your wisdom and your education because I'm, I'm super like nervous system and mental health. Like those are my two strong like wellness um, passions, you know, mm -hmm. um, that I feel like are not, I don't want to say that are going to be problems or issues, but there has to bring, be more awareness and talk around because mm -hmm. as you said, like it's not going to get any slower and I'm seeing more and more people burnt out. And so mm -hmm. we have to really allow ourselves to take that honest inventory on how can we do better and how yeah. can we choose to treat ourselves better. Totally. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited to see how, 
uh, your journey continues. Like I said, I feel like you've just scratched the surface on what's happening too with your work. Mm -hmm. We all have because yeah. there's going to be a deeper, um, there's going to be more interest and deeper exploration, I feel, about the brain, about the nervous system, about our hormones, like just our overall bodies. Like it's actually a really awesome time to be alive and to see how um, these conversations, again, aren't a fad. They're not a trend. Like this is part of what I feel is our, uh, is part of humanity's evolution. Right Absolutely. Now. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So I thank you for that. So to wrap up, I want to just do a couple lightning <clears throat> round questions. Um, I love to do these at the end of my episodes. This has been so informative and great. What a great way to start the new year. So thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So what is your animal totem? Mm. I'm actually not familiar. Is that like my spirit? You, yeah, your spirit animal. Yeah. Okay, I think it, I think it, um, I don't know if this is how it works, but I feel like it, it evolves, it changes. Absolutely. Um, okay. Where are you at right so, now? Right now, it's a moth. Oh um, my gosh, I have a moth wing right here. Oh it's my gosh. It's me lately too. <laughs> so Amazing. funny. Yeah. Yeah, I um over the summer it was like I would see moths in like the weirdest like it wasn't you know moths are nocturnal and so you usually see them in the evening but I would like wake up and there's like a mo like I don't know just like everywhere and then I'd go on and I'd be listening to music and the album cover would have like a moth on <laughs> like, amazing oh amazing um, yeah <laughs> and what is the one book that changed your life hmm. It's called The Goddess Among Us. Um, it's essentially the life of Ananda Maima, who's like, she's just revered as just an incredible spiritual teacher and, and guide. And um, yeah, I finished that book recently and that probably was the most impactful book that I've ever read. So, Amazing. Yeah. Cool. So I caught you at a good time then. Um, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, what would you, what is your future that you see with uh, the awareness of adaptogens and hormone balance and health? Like how do you see your education and your, you, you living out your mission, making an impact in the world? Hmm. Um, I guess, you know, I, my, my biggest passion is to, is to be a teacher and a healer. And so in whatever capacity that is, like I, I'm passionate about clearing out my stuff and purifying my mind and, and, and so that I can be that vessel to hold space for other people. Um, you know, I'm really passionate, like I said, about human potential. So giving people tools to really upgrade their nervous system and, and, um, have that foundation. So, um, I'm also really passionate about meditation. I, I don't claim to be any sort of meditation teacher or any of that, but I would love to fuse those two worlds at some point. Um, so continuing to increase my, um, continuing to do trainings and things in that area to really merge like ancient wisdom with more modern, um, ways of bringing it to people. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Big bridge. You go, girl. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So what would you say to younger Elizabeth? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think this could change, but right now where I'm at currently, um, I would probably tell her to stay open and, and to not close off and to to feel everything. And, um, you know, one of the things that I was told repeatedly over and over when I was younger was that I was too compassionate, which is like the worst thing to tell someone because I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah. That I was told like, you're, you're going to get, you're going to get hurt essentially. Aww. So in that I like totally closed off and, um, you know, that's kind of like where I'm at now is just like opening back up and like opening my heart and really being in that space. Um, 
because the fact is, is that I actually do feel like I'm a Pisces moon. So I do like feel feel so much, but it's like, no one sees that. And so in that, you know, I put on this, like, I have it all together front. Mm -hmm. So I would probably just tell her like, it's okay. You can, you can be seen. It's like safe. Mm, I love that. Okay. So 2019 here, what are three things you're ready to call in and actualize? (laughs) Oh, I love that. I still need to like sit down and like be with that. um, Definitely um, more expansion. I know like this year is going to be super expansive for um, just more of like the elixir end of everything. The by Erica Elizabeth end of everything. So um, yeah, I guess really just spreading that and getting it to the point where um, I can really stand more in that education and like leader role versus like wearing all the hats. (laughs) Um, So that's definitely coming. Um, Hmm. I'm feeling another trip to India. (laughs) Um, I don't know when, hopefully next year, but maybe, you know, but beginning to make that happen. Um, And actually, I think the other thing is, is, is related to what we were just talking about, which is just more compassion, more empathy, more feeling things. I think um, one of the things being an entrepreneur and being in business, one of my misconceptions was like, I don't have time to like sit and talk about like how I made you feel or like how I'm feeling in this moment. Like there is like things to do. (laughs) And I'm learning that that's like so mistaken. Like that's not, that's actually not, like there's actually nothing else to do than like relationships are everything and like your relationship to yourself, your relationship to others, your relationship to everything around you. And I think mm, I'm so easy to set like personal like development goals or like business goals, things like that. And I really, I think one of the things that I close and closing out this year with is like being more simple and like what if I were to just give my attention to one thing and that one thing was like compassion or what I mean not multitasking what are you yeah (laughs) yeah um not trying to do and be everything but just and I'm putting value on something like compassion instead of like manifesting my dream life you know like there's Mm -hmm. like that's great like but I think that's like such the the dialogue right now and I think values yeah 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 so yeah. Amazing. Um, so where can we find you? And yeah. by Erica Elizabeth <laughs> and all the things. Yeah. So everything, my website and my Instagram is by Erica Elizabeth and that's B Y. <laughs> and then my first name is spelt with a K instead of an A. So it's E R I K A. Um, so by Erica Elizabeth is the website and then all the links are in the show notes too. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and so those are really the main things like you can shop the elixirs on that site. You can get in touch for nutrition consulting and all that through the website. Um, my website is going to be like totally different by January 1st. So if you go and it's different, don't worry, you're still on the same website, but it's being totally redone. So um, yeah. Great. And then if there's one last thing you want to share with whoever's listening, just some words of encouragement or whatever is coming up. Yeah. um, I guess what's, what's here right now is to just listen to your heart and I know that like the work that you do is, is, um, I mean, you're a lot of things, but is really like development in business from like a more spiritual and like helping people really step into their power and own what their, what their gifts and what their, their potential is. And so I guess I think, you know, one of the biggest things that I've learned and what I want to share with people is the value in in listening to yourself and honoring yourself and listening to your heart. And we say that all the time, but not many people actually embody that. And when we can do that, like 
really life does just flow, but it's when we, we fall out of that space that, that things become more complicated. It's really actually simple when we listen to our heart. So I guess that would be my, my closing, closing advice. Amazing. Thank you so much. And also mentioning, uh, if you go to buy ericaelizabeth.com and you use the code Sovereign Society, you get $10 off your first. Yes. Yes. So Mm -hmm. we want to help you kick off 2019 on the right foot, feeling balanced. So reach out to Elizabeth and connect with her if you have any questions, especially if you're working a lot with balancing your hormones and healing your nervous system and all the things that we talked about. This was such a jam packed. What a great health episode to bring on for the new year. You know, like January 1st, (laughs) 30 pounds. And then by week three, everyone's not at the gym anymore, but this is like a long, deep um, information for you all. So Elizabeth, thank you again so much uh, for being here and sharing all your wisdom and your knowledge and really setting precedent for the year ahead. And really helping people reclaim their power back because that's why we're all here. So yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was was a good conversation. So I hope everyone gets some value out of there. Yes. Yeah. Like you said, if, if you guys have any questions or want to reach out, like I'm totally here. So yay. Thanks everyone for tuning in and take care of yourself, honor yourself, and we'll be seeing you soon. Take care.